Okay, so this right here is with Hasler engaged. With This is Boothby Hasler. So now let's just go back to... And we just have some shock cords to keep it from steering too far. And so this is just the... Uh, You can see how she's just, you know, we're steering a slalom course here. For those of you who are unfamiliar with the Hasler type self-steering wind vane, perhaps a quick review would be helpful. The first caveat with this type of self-steering wind vane is that it can only be implemented on a stern hung rudder. But given that, it is the simplest type of self-steering wind vane that has been devised so far. And, it is only a semi-skilled job to construct out of off-the-shelf materials, and so it lends itself nicely to the amateur builder. This wind vane consists of three pieces, a trim tab, a shaft, and an air paddle. The trim tab is mounted on gudgeons on the trailing edge of the rudder, and then it's attached, to which is attached a shaft which goes up above the rudder head, and to the shaft is attached the air paddle and there must be some sort of engaging or clamping mechanism so that when the boat is on the desired course or really sailing at the desired angle to the wind the air paddle can be engaged to the shaft and when the air paddle is engaged to the trim tab shaft this wind vane, and this is what all wind vanes do will keep the boat sailing at a constant angle to the wind so yes, if the wind changes direction you will begin sailing on a different course this is a wind vane, not an autopilot. To understand how the wind vane accomplishes this, perhaps it's easiest just to see it by means of an example. So let's take the example where we're sailing along and then the boat starts getting off course and that it starts sailing at a closer angle into the wind. So she's starting to round up into the wind. So then what happens? So if the wind comes at a closer angle to the bow, as represented by the dotted blue arrow above, the air paddle will move accordingly, or will rotate counterclockwise slightly. Since it's engaged to the shaft, which is, engaged, which is attached to the trim tab, it will rotate the trim tab counterclockwise slightly. With the water flowing over the trim tab, going from left to right on the illustration, this will create a downward force represented by the purple arrow, or we'll have a force that is pushing the, t pushing the rudder to leeward. Now remember, the tiller moves in the opposite direction as the rudder, so if you shove the rudder to leeward, you push the tiller to windward. And what do you do if you want to steer further off the wind or, or fall off a bit? You helm up, so it's doing exactly as it should. And it will continue to helm up until the boat returns to its original angle with respect to the wind. And you can work out that if the boat steers too far away from the wind, or too wide a wind angle, everything will work in reverse. And again, the self-steering wind vane will bring the boat back so that it is sailing at its original angle to the wind. And we're starting off at 099. And let's start... Start the timer uh, every 10 seconds. We're at 130. So, what I'm attempting to do here is to quantify the performance difference between the Hasler self steering wind vane and what I'm calling the Boothby modified Hasler, which I'll explain in a minute. But what I'm doing just now is I have the wind vane engaged. Uh, this time just the Hasler wind vane, and I'm recording my true heading off the GPS every 10 seconds. And what I want to quantify here is the amount of wander um, given, given one type of self-steering wind vane and then the other. One, one, one. And obviously you want to minimize wander. Uh, you want to steer as, as straight a course as possible. So I want to see if I can get some quantified comparison here. One, four, five. Thank you. 
so you can see the way this is just it's uh, there's too much it's kind of hard over one way hard over the other and you can even see our, our cars I mean look look at how just look at our wake you can see a big ass right there a big ass in the wake so let's re-engage Boothby Hasler which all we do is we take this connect it here take this connect it there and now watch how much look at how much straighter that is see, look, look, see the, the, the tiller is varying far less and she's just moving right along and pretty much doing a nice straight course So all I've done with the Boothby Modified Hasler is to add that transverse trim tab tiller. So it's a tiller which is attached to the trim tab shaft. And then to that on either side I run shock cords back to my main tiller. Let's examine what effect this would have. Say for example the tiller moves to windward. This may or may not happen because the wind angle changed. For example, the rolling of the boat also changes the underwater profile, and that also changes how the trim tab acts. I find with Ruth Avery that the tiller follows the roll. So if she rolls to windward, the tiller moves to windward. If she rolls to leeward, the tiller moves to leeward. Anyway, if the tiller moves to windward, then it tensions the lee shock cord. This then pulls on the trim tab tiller and rotates the trim tab in a clockwise direction which produces an upward force this time, as shown by the blue arrow. Thus shoving the rudder back to windward and the tiller to leeward. Now remember, our tiller wandered off to windward, so it's a counteracting effect. And the whole idea here was to prevent oversteering. So the idea here is to use the trim tab to act like soft bumpers to keep the tiller and the rudder from moving too far. In other words, to prevent the Hasler from oversteering the boat, which seems to be our problem. Well, as they say, the proof of the pudding is in the eating. So what I have plotted here from this one test is the amount of wander, where wander is defined as the course in degrees true sampled at every 10 seconds minus the average course steered over the period of three minutes. So basically how many degrees off cor course you were at each sampling time. So conditions for this test was about 10 to 15 knots of wind, about one meter seas, and we're sailing on a broad reach. And so as I had hoped, as you can see, the, the Boothby Hasler shown by the red is pretty nicely bounded within plus or minus 20 degrees of wander. Whereas the unassisted Hasler, occasionally we get some swings up close to 60 degrees, which I posit is the result of the oversteering problem, the fact that the trim tab just tends to move the tiller and the rudder too far. If I take the standard deviation of sample course headings in degrees, for Hasler I get 25 degrees, and for Boothby Hasler I get 13. So broadly speaking, Boothby Hasler has cut the wander in half, which is a significant improvement. Of course, this is just one test on one point of sale. More data will be required to establish the benefits of this new arrangement. Oh, hi everybody! It is Saturday, the 10th of December. 2022 and uh, we are at approximately 23 degrees 30 minutes north and 67 degrees 20 minutes west thereabouts so I think we are now officially in the tropics and I can tell you it officially feels like the tropics uh, it's, it's now getting pretty warm and humid um, we've got these kind of funky north-northwest winds, and these are supposed to pick up uh, looks like to about 15 to 25 knots overnight, uh, and then falling away again tomorrow on Sunday. 
looks like another large, uh, another large low pressure system is going by north of us tonight. Um, and then down south, there's no trade winds down south. But down by Puerto Rico, it's just all light wind. And it doesn't look like the trades are going to fill in down there until Wednesday. Uh, today's Saturday. So it looks like what we'll brisk sailing tonight and then nice sailing tomorrow, um, Sunday, and then it looks like Monday it's gonna go pretty, it's gonna get pretty light. And uh, Tuesday, again, just kind of very light, generally northeasterly, but very light winds. And uh, then it looks like the trades finally, the northeasterly trades finally filling in on Wednesday. So hopefully that'll scoot us the rest of the way into, uh, into Puerto Rico, into Calabria. I just took some altitude to the upper limb of the moon, and it is uh, Monday morning, the 12th of December. So, uh, I reckon, considering I haven't pulled the sexton out in a, in a year, and uh, you know, and I, I take a take a bunch of moon shots and get within, you know, my average is within a mile of where I am. It's not bad. I think. Yeah. Still got it here. Consider supporting this channel by becoming a patron. As a patron, you will be able to view my videos free of ads. You will also be able to leave comments, ask questions, and message me directly. You can become a patron for as little as $5 a month.